5G enables new digital communications and helps to create new business models across every industry by supporting a diverse set of applications and use cases. Meeting this service diversity dictates the need to build flexibility into the network to optimize performance while lowering cost. Hence the need for transport network slicing. Transport network slicing creates multiple logical networks on top of a common shared physical infrastructure to serve the specific requirements of each service. It enables the network to serve different slices, which may include a low bandwidth slice for connecting IoT devices, a high bandwidth slice in support of mobile broadband applications, and an ultra low latency slice for real time applications as separate instances within the same network. This results in better network utilization to help reduce costs while providing the flexibility and scale needed to address growing demand. This demo depicts a scenario where a mobile network operator is utilizing network slices in support of different services and clients. The demo architecture consists of a pair of 1830 PSS8 packet optical switches connected to an Ixia test set emulating RAN traffic streams. The traffic is packet aggregated using the 1830 PSS and transported over transport network slices to enable the required QoS for each traffic stream. At the MEX site, we have a TP4100 providing the sync signal, both frequency and time phase, which the 1830 PSS processes in the boundary clock and then transmits over a dedicated optical timing channel to avoid packet delay variation arising from network asymmetries. We are using the Paragon Neo to test the synchronization performance to standards. The 1830 PSS implements hard isolation via coherent OTN DWDM Muxponder cards that create independent circuit switched connections using ODU flex channels that can range in size from 1.25 to 100 gigs. Furthermore, it supports L2 packet cards based on SROS, which can provide soft isolation of flows using Ethernet virtual connections. The ability to statistically multiplex layer two services into a soft isolated EVC prior to mapping into a hard isolated ODU flex allows for statistical multiplexing gain and ensures that bandwidth is not stranded. The Ethernet ports of the layer two card take in public safety video surveillance traffic and put this onto its own EVC with corresponding QoS parameters. And likewise for the public safety IoT traffic, these flows are assigned to a hard slice containing the mission critical public safety traffic to meet performance and security requirements. The mobile gaming traffic, meanwhile, uses a separate network slice whose bandwidth or resources are not shared with the public safety slice. Similarly, the 1830 PSS uses a hard slice to distribute synchronization data to the cell site using a bi-directional optical timing channel to transport synchronization over the optical network provides the determinism and accuracy needed to accurately recover time and phase. Next, we test the PTP time synchronization performance as compared against the requirements stipulated by ITUT G.8273.2 with two cascaded clocks in the chain. While Class B telecom boundary clocks meet mobile backhaul accuracy requirements, the 1830 PSS8 performance is capable of meeting Class C thresholds as needed in front hall networks. We can see from the table, the thresholds are defined for max time error, constant time error, and dynamic time error for the two measurement types. The max time error represents the maximum distance from the zero of the time error function, which is the difference between the reference time and the actual measured time. Here we see that the two-way time error, or max time error on the 1830 PSS8 is constant over time and well within the 37 nanosecond limit. Constant time error, CTE, is the mean of the time error function. Looking at the two-way constant time error performance of the two 1830 PSS8 boundary clocks, we see that the performance is well within the plus or minus 20 nanosecond threshold stipulated by the standard. Next, we'll look at the dynamic time error performance. Dynamic time error is phase or time wander and is analyzed using the maximum time interval error. And the time deviation is shown in the bottom graph. Zooming in on the MTIE graph, we can see that the two-way mean time interval error is well below the 14 nanosecond threshold. Looking at the time deviation graph, we see that the time deviation of the 1830 PSS8s has remained constant and well below the three nanosecond threshold. 
our reliable physical layer frequency distribution via synchronous Ethernet, or SYNC-E, aids PTP in achieving more accurate timing. The 1830 PSS performance meets the requirements of enhanced Ethernet equipment clocks. Our next test will verify this performance. The ITUT G.8262.1 defines performance requirements for enhanced EEC clocks, which represent a roughly five-fold increase in performance over traditional EEC clocks. Enhanced EEC has stricter frequency performance requirements for jitter and wander generation, tolerance and transfer, as well as better hold over stability. Let's take one important metric as an example, wander generation in locked mode. The maximum time interval error, MTIE, is seven nanoseconds for enhanced EEC. Looking at the time deviation graph, we see that the time deviation of the 1830 PSS-8s remained well below the enhanced EEC wander threshold. In conclusion, we have seen in this demo that operators can use the 1830 PSS to create multi-service transport network slices with a mix of both hard and soft isolation to improve service delivery and bandwidth efficiency. And we have demonstrated the excellent synchronization performance of the 1830 PSS in meeting both frequency and phase time performance requirements enabled by SYNC-E and PTP clocks interconnected over a dedicated optical timing channel.